So what happens to a gas when we keep the pressure constant and we change the volume? Well, okay, for instance, you have a gas in this, here's the volume of it right here, like one liter or something like that, maybe two liters of a gas, and the volume of the container shrinks. Okay, so now you're going to say, well, yeah, well, you increase the pressure. So if you decrease volume, you increase the pressure. And I say, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. But here's what happens. As that volume shrinks, the pressure stays the same and doesn't change. So what's actually happening to the molecules inside that container? Well, they should be increasing in pressure, but if they're staying the same in pressure, you must actually be slowing those molecules down. They gotta be, they gotta be just like not hitting the sides of their container as much. So they gotta cool down, baby, and when they cool down, they're cooling off. And so the idea is this, that if you keep the pressure the same, but the volume decreases, the temperature has to decrease in order to keep that pressure the same. What happens then if you take a volume of a gas and you increase the size of that volume, make that volume larger? Well, you would say, well, then the pressure is going to decrease. But I say, no, the pressure stays the same. You're going to say, well, then the molecule's got to speed up. That's right, and that means you have to warm them up. And so the deal is, what Charles found out was that if you take the volume of a gas and you compare it to the temperature at constant pressure, you'll find that they are directly proportional to one another. And that means then that as one goes up, the other goes up in order to maintain a number that when one divided by the other equals a K value, that when you change the volume, the temperature changes accordingly to maintain that number. And therefore, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And what you've got now is Charles' Law. But the interesting thing about Charles' Law is once you start to do some calculations with it, do gases exist at zero degrees Celsius? Well, right now outside, since I'm filming in the fall here, hey, guess what? It's close to zero outside. But that doesn't mean that there's no gas in the air. Huh? Well, now look, if you were silly enough to be able to think that, well, my initial temperature is zero here. What? Right away, look, if you put a zero into either of these temperature values, you're going to get something that's completely undefined and uncalculatable. And yet, gases do exist at zero, don't they? So here's the thing. We can't use degrees Celsius, and we can't use Fahrenheit either, to be able to do calculations involving gases. What scientists found out was that if you take a gas and you start to change its volume, how does the pressure, how does the temperature respond? The temperature, as you say, you decrease the volume, well, you decrease the temperature as well. And if you graph that, all of the graphs pass through the zero for temperature here, go into the negatives, and no matter what gas you have and where you start, all the lines will converge onto one specific temperature. And what is that temperature? It is the coldest that you can get anywhere in the universe, negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. And that is what we call zero Kelvins, or zero K. But here's the thing, we're not there. We don't get there. We can't get there. It is a number that you can't get to because if you plug in a zero Kelvins in here, things don't work. And actually, then, if we actually could freeze matter to zero Kelvins, all the matter's movement would stop, including the electrons in their defined places. And if we could know where those electrons actually are and know how fast they're going, we'd blow up Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And we can't do that, can we? So therefore, we can't get to zero K. So now, here's the deal. Using this formula right here, and by the way, what is the relationship graphically for volume and temperature? Well, if the temperature is in Kelvins, right? then they vary with one another in a directly proportional fashion. And it's cool to be able to draw that straight line there. I still don't put it at the origin here at the zero because we can't get to zero K. So now we do this question and it says calculate the new volume of a gas at 25 degrees Celsius and 2.5 liters that's warmed up to 50 degrees Celsius. And you say, hey, Kim guy, I don't have to do that. Look, that's an easy calculation because if we're going to double the t temperature going from 25 to 50, I'll just double the volume because the volume is going to go up, right? They're directly proportional. 2.5 goes to 5. I win, you lose. You just failed chemistry because you didn't pay attention that you cannot use degrees Celsius in the calculation. It must be converted to Kelvins. It has to be. So here's the deal. 
Um, a doubling of the temperature in degrees Celsius doesn't cause a corresponding doubling, right? What you need to do is just do the math properly. So, here's the formula. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. We're solving for V2, the new volume. So V2 is going to equal V1 T2 over T1. Does that make sense to you? When you multiply both sides by T2, that's the formula. Now we plug in the numbers. What's the initial volume? The initial volume is 2.5 liters. What is the temperature of that 2.5 liters? 25 degrees Celsius. Now, add 273 to degrees Celsius to get kelvins. Because remember, 0K is negative 273 degrees Celsius. So, and by the way, they, they go up proportionally. So one increase in degrees Celsius is one corresponding increase in terms of kelvins. So always add 273 to your degrees Celsius to get your kelvins. So what is that T2 that we're looking at here? Well, the T2 is 50 degrees Celsius. And so adding 273 to that gives you 323K, that's kelvins, divided by the temperature initial, 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298K. Do the math, you'll find it. And then the answer is 2.7 to two significant digits, when you do that math, liters. Does that make sense? Sure it makes sense. Because look, what we did was we increased the temperature, so we're going to increase the volume. That's the way that they respond with, to each other, and that is an increase. It's not a doubling, is it? And it is a logical increase based on using kelvins in your temperature.